Okay, good morning um, and welcome to the second keynote, I think, or the third one, even the third one, yes. I just arrived, so <laughs> I missed, unfortunately, the other two, and I'm very glad that I can introduce <coughs> Marco Passarotti, uh, the director of a research center called CIRCSE. Uh, and full professor at the Catholic University in Milano. And the reason uh, why we have uh, Marco here is ERC grant uh, called LILA, Linking Latin, uh, or the longer title would be Building a Knowledge Base of Linguistic Resources for Latin. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what went on in the project. Please, Marco. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I think so. So, thank you very much. I would like to thank, first of all, the organizers of this conference, because uh, uh, well, I had never attended EDEX before, and uh, I discovered a, a great community, a great conference, so I'm learning a lot. So thank you very much for inviting me, really. I think that I will attend it again <laughs> in the next edition, so thank you very much. So. Uh, well, today I will talk about uh, interoperable words. So interoperability will be one of the keywords of my talk. And uh, together with the interoperability, there will be interlinking. So the subtitle here is interlinking lexical, and we will see also some textual resource for Latin, but uh, following a method that it's not only for Latin, in the so-called LILA knowledge base. So. The overview, the outlook of my talk is this. First of all, I will provide you with a very brief introduction about the fundamentals uh, of LILA, its mission, its uh, basic under architecture. And then I will move to the very core of LILA, that is to say the so-called Lemma Bank, and we will see some lexical resources we have because we are talking about lexicography. And uh, then we will put our hands on data using some services and tools of LILA. And finally, I will sketch some conclusions. So let's start from, from the very basics. So the research question. Well, the research question of LILA started from a state of affairs uh, that was a problem for me. You know, uh, I'm a computational linguist. I develop um, NLP tools and resources, textual resources, lexical resources for Latin. And my problem that, uh, was that I had a lot of wonderful resources for Latin, but uh, they did not interact. They were sparse. So across the years, the decades, we have built and collected for Latin, but for several languages, as you know, a lot of textual resources, so corpora, Lexical resources, I don't have to tell you what re lexical resources are, and natural language processing tools. And the problem is that they are scattered and unconnected. Very often, you have to go on the web, search for them, and then once you have collected them, you get through different data formats, different tax sets, different criteria for annotation, different query languages in order to extract information from them. Well, it's, di it's difficult. It's particularly different, difficult if you are a classicist and a Latinist, and you are not uh, formed, you, are, you have no competencies in computational linguistics, for instance, or in computer science, in order to make all these things interact. So this was the starting point of uh, the LILA knowledge base, which, uh, well, I used to say is, well, I must say was, because uh, LILA finished uh, three weeks ago, so during these five years of this ERC consolidator grant, we built uh, this knowledge base, which is defined as a collection of multifarious, which means lexical and textual resources, interoperable linguistic resources, described with the same vocabulary for knowledge description, which means that they speak the same language. So they are represented and published using the same ontologies. So by using same data categories, classes, properties. So we started from the assumption that interlinking these, these resources was a way to make them interact. 
so to make them interoperable. And we did it following the approach of the so-called linked data paradigm. So now I just resume here what are the <coughs> four principles of the linked data paradigm. So sorry if this may sound trivial to some of you here, because uh, yesterday I uh, attended a couple of or three presentations about linked data. So there, the linked data principles were very well known. Uh, so, but I think that it's important to resume them just very briefly. So first of all, the, the first principle is that you have to use URIs. URIs are uniform resource identifiers. So unique and persistent uh, identifiers for the things you deal with. So everything you deal with is uniquely and persistently identified by, by an ID, like your genetic code. OK, what are the things we deal with? We are linguists. You are lexicographers. So the things we deal with are linguistic things, like, for instance, an entry in a lexicon or a dictionary, or a token, an occurrence of a word in a corpus. So we assign URIs, unique and persistent identifiers, to each of them. Then we publish them on the web. So you use HTTP URIs to allow people and machines to look at things. So you should publish this URIs as URLs on the web. Third, you use web standards to represent and query the data and metadata of these things, which are these things, such as RDF and Sparkle. Uh, I do not enter the details here of Sparkle, which is a qu query language. I will show you some example. Well, RDF means Resource Description Framework. Maybe it is already well known here. Let me resume this. RDF is the data model that is behind the linked data word, the semantic web. And uh, it is based on the concept of triples. Everything deals with triples. A subject, an object, and the relation between them. So imagine that I am a subject, and uh, I assign to myself a URI, my genetic code. And Simon is an object, and he has his uh, URI, his genetic code. There is a relation between us represented by a predicate, which is his colleague of. So Marco is colleague of Simon, and this is a triple. And everything is represented in terms of, triple, of triples, and you will see a lot of triples. Then you include, you include links to other URIs, exactly like this. You include links to other URIs. I, I can incl include a new link to all of you, we are all colleagues, using the same predicate. Remember that the name, the predicate, is technically called the property. So a subject, an object, and a property. And this is a triple. OK. Uh, in Lila, these triples are all represented, are all applied following a basic architecture which looks like this, which is highly lexically based. So it's great for me to talk to, to, about this to lexicographers. So we started from here. So these are the providers of data and metadata. So you have lexical resources, a WordNet, a dictionary, and lexicon. OK, if you open a lexical resource, Usually, you find lexical entries. You open a dictionary, you find entries. OK. Then you have textual resources, like a corpus, for instance, or a digital library collecting texts. And if, if you open a text, what do you find? You find occurrences of words in those texts, which co we call technically the tokens. And then you have natural language processing tools that provide natural language processing outputs. You see this double arrow here because the output of a specific kind of NLP tool, the so-called tokenizers, are tokens. And then the tokens are the input of other NLP tools, like, for instance, a lemmatizer or a part of speech tagger. OK, it's not by chance here that this node is bigger than the others, because everything in DILA is interconnected and then so becomes interoperable thanks to the connection of these things to the lemmas. So basically what we have is a big collection of lemmas for Latin, and through them we make it all interact. So for instance, you can ask to the Lila knowledge base, oh, give me all the occurrences, so all, the, all the tokens. 
of the same lemma in a number of different corpora. Okay, this is pretty easy. But let me go one step further. Give me all the occurrences, so all the tokens, in a number of different corpora of those lemmas that show some lexical properties that are provided by the lexical entries of a number of lexical resources. Oh, okay, this is more difficult. What you're doing is to use a number of different corpora, a number of different lexical resources, the data and data metadata that they provide, and to make them interact, which is basically what we do in our daily research life. You know, you make use of the data that come from corpora and from lexical resources, and you make interact in order to find your knowledge. Okay, keeping this in mind that everything in, the, in LILA is based on lemmas, well, Let's move to the second part of the talk, which is the lemma bank. Because, uh, as you can imagine, as you can imagine, the core component of the LIDA knowledge base is a big collection of lemmas for Latin, around 125,000. So we spent the first two years and a half of the project building this big list of lemmas. Well, you know, my friends usually make a joke of me saying, really, the ERC gave you 2 million euros to build a list of words? Well, uh, I don't have to tell you how much this can be difficult, because you are lexicographers, you know how much this is difficult. It's, it is more difficult to explain this to one of my friends. But that's another story. So, the Lemma Bank is the big collection of lemmas for Latin, and we built it according to this ontology that was already mentioned yesterday in a couple of uh, talks, so, may so maybe it is well known here, but, and it is Ontolex Lemon, which, which is basically the de facto standard for publishing lexical resources as linguistic linked open data. Uh, I will not enter all the details, I will just focus on two classes of this uh, uh, ontology. So, the class lexical entry, so a lexical resource is made of one or more lexical entries. And the lexical entry is linked to one or more lexical forms. So the lexical forms are the different inflected forms of a lexical entry. So for instance, for Latin, for the lexical entry for puella, which means girl, you will have forms like puella, puellae, puellarum, puellis, all the inflected forms. Okay, one of these forms is linked to the lexical entry by this property, this predicate, which is canonical form. It is the canonical form of the lexical entry. So the form that is canonically, that is conventionally used to uh, mention that lexical entry. In other words, it is the lemma. You know perfectly that for a lexical entry, you can have different lemmas. Well, we found some strategies in LILA in order to harmonize the different uh, criteria of lemmatization. But what is important to keep in mind, to bear in mind here, is that this canonical form property connects a lexical entry to the form of the lexical entry that is the lemma. So the lemma bank is basically a big collection of lexical forms of ontolex lemon for Latin that can be used as canonical forms in the lexical and textual resources for Latin that we want to interlink. So now, let's start from an example and see how it works. Uh, we start to look at this lemma, lemma admirer, which, which, which means uh, to admire, and this is the genetic code of uh, admirer. So this is the URI, the Uniform Resource Identifier of admirer. So we will start from the lemma bank, and from the lemma bank we will see a number of lexical resources that are interlinked passing through the admirer in the Lemma Bank. So let's click here and let's hope that everything goes well. So, um, this is the so-called data sheet. So these are all the triples that are linked to a subject in, te in technical terms. Here the subject is this one, is this URI. And this URI is the URI for the Lemma Admirer in the Lemma Bank. And here you have all the triples linked to this URI. So, this is the subject, these are the properties, so the predicates, and these are the objects. 
okay? Like in the case of myself and Simon and the property between us. So in this case, you are saying that this URI has part of speech verb. So in other words, this URI is a verb. Okay, if you go down, you will see the so-called inverse relations. These are the cases where these are the subjects, these is the property, so the predicate, and the URI for admiral is the object. So for instance, if you click here on this as lemma, you will see all the tokens in all the corpora for Latin linked to Lila that are linked to the URI for admiral by the property as lemma. So these tokens, these occurrences of words in texts, have, have lemma admiral. So imagine that to the node admiral, in the RDF graph of the knowledge base, you link all the occurrences of admiral in all the corpora, which is exactly what we want to do according to the architecture. So, but now let's focus, first of all, on lexical resources. And to make it clear, let's use this graphical interface. Uh, okay, so this is just a graphical representation of uh, the lemma admiral with graphical variation admiral, According to Antolex Lemon, this is a called, these are called written representations uh, in the Lemma Bank. Okay, you see that here there is a number of links. And let's focus on some of them. Okay, let's start from here. And let's focus on this one. Okay. So this is an example of a lexical resource linked to Lila. So a lexical resource is made of lexical entries. So this is the lexical entry for admiral in the Latin wordnet. So imagine that you open the Latin wordnet and you find all the lexical entries, and this is one of the lexical entries of the Latin wordnet, and it is the lexical entry for admiral. If you go here, you will see that this is an individual of type lexical entry, which means that this is a case, an example, so, technically speaking, an individual that belongs to the class of ontolex lemon lexical entry. So, it is a lexical entry. You will see that this is linked by canonical form. If you remember, ontolex lemon, you have the lexical entry, which is linked to, the, to these lexical forms. And one of these lexical formed forms is linked to the lexical entry by canonical form. It's lemma. So, this is how we link the lexical entries in the lexical resources to the lemma bank by canonical form. So it's, it's very easy. So the idea of Lila is very easy. You link the lexical entries to the lemma and you link the tokens to the, the lemma. Very easy. Okay, as you know, the Latin wordnet is a wordnet. And according to Antolex Lemon, a, a, a lexical entry can evoke, this is uh, one of the properties of Ontolex Lemon, a lexical concept. And the WordNet synsets are modeled as individuals of the class lexical concept. So the WordNet individuals are lexical concepts. So Admirror is linked, so evokes, to a number of synsets, which are the synsets to which admiral is linked in the Latin wordnet. So, this synset is the synset that means whose gloss is regard highly, think much of it. So this is one of the senses of admiral, which is represented in wordnet by the fact that admiral is linked to, belongs to this synset. Okay, this synset has an ID, which is the, syn the ID of this synset in the Princeton WordNet. So to this synset, as you can imagine, are linked several other lemmas, several other lexical entries. So for instance, to this synset, which means, I remind you, re regard highly, think much of it, are linked other lexical entries of the Latin WordNet, like for instance, estimo, and AMO. And, well, each of them 
is linked by canonical form. Oh, sorry. Here it is. Is linked by canonical form. By canonical form here to what? To its lemma in the lemma bank. Okay. So here with these three nodes, we are in the lemma bank. Here with these three nodes, we are in a lexical resource. These are lexical entries of a lexical resource. So then imagine that each of these lemmas is linked to all its occurrences in all the corpora of Lila. So what can you ask? Oh, give me all the tokens that are linked to those lemmas in the lemma bank that have a lexical entry in the, lemma, in the Latin wordnet that evokes this thing set. So what are you doing? You are using together, you are making interact several corpora where the tokens are and the Latin wordnet. So the good news is that we already have several of these resources. We have them. What we need to do is to make them interact. So, there is something more. Let's focus again on Admiral. Oh, these are all triples. These are all triples, a subject, an object, and a relation. So, let's focus again on Admiral. Here it is. Admiral is then linked to this so-called base of mirrors. So, in the lemma bank, the lemmas are linked to a node that connects, that puts together all the words in the lemma bank that are derived from a common lexical base. So in this case, the, the base of mirrors. So if you look here, you will find lemmas like Miraculosus and Nimir, Nimirum and Admirabilis and Mirificus and so on. So what can you do here? Oh, give me all the tokens linked to all those lemmas that are linked to the same base. So it is one step further uh, than uh, just the lemmatization. Give me all the forms of a lemma. Give me all the forms of those lemmas that are linked, that share the same base. Okay, but, well, you see that admirabilis has also a prefix and a suffix. So, for instance, admirabilis includes the, su the suffix bill. This is a triple. This is the subject, which is a lemma in the lemma bank, admirabilis with graphical variation, admirabilis, which has a suffix, which is bill. And, uh, well, what do you expect that is linked to bill? To bill are linked all the lemmas in the lemma bank that in their word formation include in some part of the word formation, the suffix bill, like per perflabilis, pollucibilitas, indiscussibilis, and so on. So what can you ask? Oh, give me all the occurrences in all the corpora linked to Lila of those lemmas that are formed with a specific suffix and that have a lexical entry in Latin wordnet that evokes a specific thing set. Wow. So this is interaction. This is interoperability between resources. And this is exactly what I needed when I was writing the ERC grant, because I, basically that was my problem, making it all interact. Okay, let's see one of the, let me show if I find it out. Where is it? I was looking for Mirus. Just a moment, I can find it. Uh, it is one, one, two, and four, four, four. Four, four, three. Four, four, four. Here it is. So, Mirus. And let's focus. So, one of the lemmas linked to the base of Mirus is Mirus. And let's focus on Mirus. So, let's clean the screen. And among the uh, lexical resources linked to Mirus, there is. Uh, let me check here. There is this one. So, one of the lexical resources linked to Mirus is uh, the Brill Dictionary about Etymology. So, the Etymological Dictionary of Latin published by Devan some years ago, which reports the uh, Proto Indo European and Proto Italic roots for some 4,000 words for Latin. 
and this is represented like this. So this is the lexical entry for Mirus in that etymological dictionary. This has an etymology, and this etymology has two etyma. This first etymon is the proto-italic root, and this second etymon, if I click here, is the proto-Indo-European root. And uh, the extension of the ontolex model that was used to model and represent this information is called Lemonetti and gives also the opportunity to represent the source target relation between the etima. So, for instance, this is the proto Indo European root, which is linked by this etymology link to the proto Italic root the source and the target. In other words, this means that the proto-Italic root derives from the, from the Indo-European, proto-Indo-European root. And this is represented in the, in the dictionary. What we are doing is just to reflect what we find in the resources. We do not build the new resources. We model the information that is in the, in the resources and we publish the information that is in the resources. Okay, now, I could go on with several resources because we, because we interlinked uh, bilingual dictionaries, uh, uh, a polarity lexicon for sentiment analysis, uh, uh, a word formation lexicon. If you go on the LILA website, you will see all the lexical resources that are linked. But I must go on. Um, and we will look at some services and tools. So, uh, you know, I deal with classicists, and, and I used to be a classicist. Um, so I know my colleagues, and I must provide them, maybe also myself, with some services and tools in order to exploit what we built, in order to exploit the LILA knowledge base. So we built some services that are online. So the first one is the Lemma Bank query interface. So here you can query the collection of the lemmas. So for instance, let me focus uh, on uh, a specific kind of uh, verbs. So for, for instance, uh, the first conjugation deponent verbs. So there are 987 of these words in the lemma bank. Uh, you can download the list as a CSV file and you can uh, download the Sparkle query that was written by the service behind this. So you can have your query and uh, run it on the Sparkle endpoint for Lila that we will see in a while. Okay, uh, well, I would like to focus just on those verbs of the first conjugation deponent that are formed with the, suff the, with the prefix add. And they are 31. And if you go down here, you will find add mirror. Here it is. Add mirror. And uh, well, on this, on this line, we reported some information from the different lexical resources that are linked to Lila, which have, that have a lexical entry for this verb, ad mirror. So for instance, this is word formation Latin. Word formation Latin reports this information about ad mirror. Word formation Latin is a lexicon that reports information about the word formation of words. So ad mirror derives from mirror with the prefix ad and its derivatives are admirabilis, admirator, admiratio and admirativus which are formed with these specific war formation rules. So for instance admirabilis is an adjective derived from a verb involving the suffix bill. If you click on bill you will go to the data sheet of bill and all the lemmas of the lemma bank linked to, li to bill will be there. Okay. Then you have information about admirer taken from the Lewis and Short. The Lewis and Short is a bilingual dictionary, Latin English, very famous one. And so you have the English translations of admirer. And then you have admirer here, the Latin wordnet. So admirer is linked to these. Uh, five different scene sets of the Latin wordnet. If you click on them, you will go to the, to the Princeton wordnet, to the Princeton wordnet that uh, scene set. And then each of them, each of these senses is linked to a valency frame 
which in this case is in all cases made of two arguments. One is the actor and the other is the patient. So a valency lexicon is linked to. Um, another service that we have is the Sparkle access point. Um, so for those of you who know Sparkle, Sparkle, which is also pronounced sometimes SparkQL, depends, I ought both of them, uh, is a query language where you write uh, the triples. So for instance, give me all the tokens uh, according to these conditions that you express in terms of triples. Like for instance, oh, give me all the colleagues of Marco Passarotti. So which means uh, give me all the something that you will give me that are related to Marco Passarotti by a property that is his colleague of, and Simon comes out. Well, uh, but not exactly Simon, but is URI. <laughs> That's the next step. <laughs> OK, uh, so here you can write Sparkle queries, but we provided some examples, so some ready-made Sparkle queries that you can run. So one of my favorites is this one. So this query searches in a number of corpora, which is the this is the index to Mysticus Tribank, which is the, the syntactically annotated corpus of the uh, works of Thomas Aquinas. Uh, Udante is the universal dependencies uh, tree bank, sorry for the name Udante, uh, universal dependencies tree bank for the Latin works of Dante Alighieri, and then Seneca from the Lasla corpus, which is a corpus of classical Latin. Okay, it searches for all the occurrences of uh, lemmas that are formed with the lexical base of the verb patio, which means to fill, in all these corpora. So what are you using? You are using together three corpora, Index Domesticus Tribank, Udante, and Lasla, and specifically of Lasla, the text of Seneca, and a word formation, Latin information. So an information about derivation. So if you click here, the query is automatically written here, and if you click here and everything goes well, you will have all the occurrences, so the tokens that are linked to a lemma which is formed with the lexical base of patio, like for instance, uh, impassibilitas. And if you click here, you will go to that token. Okay, then we have the Lila search platform. This is a, a news of the project, so it's still ongoing, the, the development. Uh, so the Lila search platform basically makes it real uh, the possibility of uh, linking information from different resources and uh, all connected by the Lemma Bank. So in the lower part here, you will have the different lexical resources. Here you will have uh, information from the textual resources, and here in the middle, you have the lemma bank. Okay, let's run a query here. Uh, we start from uh, word formation Latin. So word formation Latin, as I said, is a lexicon of word formation. So you have words related by word formation rules. You have that amator, lover, is linked to amo, to love, by a specific rule with a specific suffix. Okay. Now I want to focus on, on some specific uh, rules. So for instance, I want to focus just on derivation rules. Oh, sorry, what is this? Okay, I want to focus, it's not my computer, you know, uh, just on derivation rules. I'm coming, you see all the compoundings here. This derivation, conversion, prefixation, okay, prefixation. And I want to focus on verbs to verbs with prefix. Here it is. So I'm searching for verbs derived from verbs with a specific prefix. And in particular, I would like to focus on those with prefix add. OK. So now, here, out of word formation Latin, I take just the verbs derived from verbs with a specific prefix add. OK. Now I add some information from Latin vallex. So Latin vallex is a valency lexicon, a valency lexicon made of valency frames with uh, semantic rules. So in some way here, 
I just can say, oh, give me all the verbs that have at least one valency frame where there is an address E. Very easy. So now, passing through the lemma bank, I'm, I'm focusing on verbs derived from verbs with the prefix add that have in their valency frame an address E. OK, now let's move in the higher part here. And let's focus on authors, because in the corpora of Lila, there are some hundred authors. So, but I would like to extract information just from some authors out of all these corpora. Uh, they are around 120. Let me focus, for instance, on Catullus, that is from the uh, Lasla corpus of classical Latin, and Cicero and Dante Alighieri. So Catullus and Cicero are from Lasla corpus, and Dante Alighieri is from Udante. OK. So I'm focusing on verbs derived from verbs with prefix add that have at least an address, e, uh, that have an address e in their valency frame in Catullus, Cicero, and Dante Alighieri. So I'm using one, two, three, and four, because these are two corpora, resources together. So what I want are the tokens. So this is the list of all the tokens, all the occurrences of verse derived from verse with prefix add in the text of Catullus, Cicero, and Dante. And if, and if I click on the first one, for instance, I go to the data sheet. And in the data sheet, this is the URI for this specific token. You will have the token context. Context. So it's a keyword in context, basically. And if you click on each of these ones, you will go to the data sheet of that specific token in the Lila knowledge base. Then we have the text linker. Uh, so that text linker address, addresses the, the same old question that everybody asks me. OK, but you need lemmas. You need lemmatized texts. And all, not all the, the digital texts for Latin that, that are there are lemmatized. OK, we built the text linker. Uh, so let's take, for instance, uh, a Latin text from the Latin library. Go here. And let's take, for instance, Cicero and Proflacco. And I just copy paste. And I just copy paste the first sentence. And I go to the text linker, which is here. And I, sorry, it's not my computer. And I paste here the text. And I say process. So here, a part of speech tagger and lemmatizer for Latin works on the back. And it lemmatizes and part of speech tags, hopefully well, the tokens of this text. And links each token to its lemma in the lemma bank. So here there are 69 tokens that were linked to one and only one couple lemma posts in the lemma bank. So for instance, if I click on honoris, the lemma is honor, and is linked to just one honor noun in the lemma bank. Then we have blue ones, which are five, which are ambiguously linked. This is the case of homography, when you have more than one lemma with the same part of speech and with the same written representation. What do you do with them? It's up to you. You decide either to disambiguate them or to keep them ambiguous. And then there are four no match. These are cases sometimes of wrong lemmatization. For instance, the case of Valeria. A Valeria, I know that is a wrong lemmatization because it was lemmatized under Valerias, while the lemma is Valeria. Or these are cases of, of lemmas that are missing in the lemma bank. So the lemma bank is pretty big, more than 120,000 lemmas, but you always get through some, uh, some uh, Arnulfus proper names, uh, proper name in some medieval Latin text. And so in a virtual circle, the more texts we linked to Lila, the bigger the lemma bank becomes, because we announce the lemma bank with the new lemmas that we need every time. So, the state of affairs of the Lila and my bank is this one. If you go on the Lila web page, on the data page, you will have the full list of all the lexical and textual resources linked to Lila. 
Currently, the lemma bank counts around 215,000 lemmas. Uh, overall, the lexical resources linked to LILA count uh, around 145,000 entries. The occurrences in the corpora of LILA, which count 158 works from uh, around 120 different authors, is around 3,500,000 occurrences. And the triples, the overall big RDF graph of LILA, is, around, is big around uh, 70 million triples. Uh, to conclude, my closing remarks. So, this is Lila, and uh, I was thinking about the topic of this edition of ELEX. You know about this topic. Invisible lexicography everywhere, lexical data is used without users realizing they make a use of a dictionary. Yeah, you are right. Well, I would like to focus on data because everything deals with data. And our data, in most cases, are words. And uh, there is a strict connection between words in lexical resources and words in textual resources, ideally in a virtuous circle. You know, uh, you are lexicographers, and I think that every time you compile some lexical entry, you need some text. You need a connection with text. And, and, and every time you, you, you work on text, maybe you work also with lexical entries from lexical resources. And this is especially true when you deal with uh, an ancient and dead language, like Latin. You know, I cannot call a native speaker of Latin uh, asking him or her, oh, what do you think about this construction or the meaning of this word? All that we, we Latinists, we classicists have are texts. And so we must exploit as best as we can those data that we have. But data are very important today for everybody. You know, it's the time of big data. And unsupervised learning is now ruling the world to be lexical resources based, for instance, uh, on uh, embeddings from distributional semantics. Uh, and now we have these large language models. And uh, at least for me, I don't know, it's the same for you. This is really changing my life of computational linguistics. Uh, because this affects the way textual resources, lexical resources, and natural languages, language processing tools are built. So for instance, for textual resources, today, the role of annotation, part of speech tagging, lemmatization, syntactic analysis, uh, is weaker than 10 years ago. Because you now you train these big, large language models uh, with uh, raw data with no annotation. And let me say that it's a pity for me because I love to annotate texts, but it's a matter of fact that unsupervised, uh, unsupervised learning is now the state of the art. It affects also the way lexical resources are built. You use embeddings and you have a different way to look at synonyms, at uh, translations, at definitions. And natural language processing tools are not built anymore using supervised learning. But unsupervised learning, in the best moment, in the best way, maybe, you use semi-unsupervised learning when you fine-tune fine a BERT model. But it's a matter of fact that resources still remain. And I think that unity and, well, interoperability is a strength. So should the electronic lexicography in the first cent 21st century be also based or more based than it is on interoperable resources, maybe following the linked data paradigm, and not, uh, it's not mandatory that it's like this. But let me say that out of, of, of this five year long experience on building linguistic linked open data and publishing uh, uh, resources as linked open data, I must say that Lila was a, a fortunate and successful case. Because to build linguistic linked open data uh, takes uh, money, time, and expertise. We had money, we had time. I don't know if we had expertise. But anyway, it's a lucky case. So in the near future, we must facilitate wider participation in linked open data by, for instance, automating, making it easier, the processing of data and metadata, so with workflows to build linked open data. And, uh, 
Now we have a lot of interlinked resources. And we must find a way to connect with the big world of big data and unsupervised learning and large language models. For instance, I'm thinking about how to use the RDF graph of uh, uh, LILA, those 70 million triples, to fine tune the Latin word. I don't have the answer. I just thought about this last week. So maybe if you will invite me again, or if I will uh, submit a proposal for the next ELEX, I will tell you if I managed or not. And uh, of course, all this is not just for Latin. Because uh, uh, the LILA architecture is based on uh, shared ontologies as much as possible. And it can be applied to any other language that is uh, mid-resourced, that has um, some dictionary, that has a list of lemmas, that has uh, some hopefully lemmatized corpora. And uh, in infrastructures like Claring today, we have a lot of resources. It would be great if they become interoperable using linguistic link open data. And this is one of the, our future words to do. And I thank you very much for your attention and for the invitation. Excellent. Thank you. And perfect timing also. Thank you very much, Marco. <laughs> So now we are at the discussion part, and I ask you if, oh, first question, yes. Thank you very much for this uh, great insight into LILA. I have two questions, if I may. The first concerns the Sparkle endpoint, and the second, the text linker, which I find very interesting. The Sparkle endpoint, uh, you know, everybody who's dealing with that knows that for many, is it loud enough? That for, for many people, Sparkle is, uh, is like a jump scare almost. <laughs> it is. And the examples you provide are really helpful. But have you thought about turning the examples in some graphical user interface to make it easier to use them intuitively? That's the first question. And the second question concerns the text linker. We are dealing with, you know, with the medieval Romans languages, and there are some lemmatization bases, exam for example, for Old French by the Ecole, de Ecole Nationale des Chartes and other things. There's none for oxygen, for Gascon, and so on. Have you tried the text linker with other languages, or would you be interested in doing that, given the fact that we would provide a lemmatization basis somehow for other languages? Yeah, so thank you very much for both questions. Well, as for the first one, the Lisp interface is just that. Because the Lisp interface is a graphical interface that writes on the back on a, a Sparkle query. So the design that I showed you from the Lisp interface corresponds to a Sparkle query, and you can download the Sparkle query. It's a, a work in progress, but it, it works. Uh, th what, what is missing is that you can download the Sparkle query behind that. If you see, there is no uh, yet uh, a button where you can say, give me the Sparkle query. But that's the answer. As for the second, well, the answer is yes, because uh, uh, one colleague of mine, one member of my team, was awarded a small grant for Clarin to apply the LILA architecture on another language using uh, the resources that are found in Clarin. So we started from Italian. So we are applying just uh, the text linker uh, interface and approach to Italian. Uh, what you mentioned about low resource languages or ancient varieties of modal languages uh, is a tricky issue because, uh, uh, you know, domain adaptation of uh, um, supervised uh, NLP tools uh, is, is a problem. So, for instance, we have uh, uh, a parser for Thomas Aquinas that reaches 90% uh, of accuracy. Then you applied it on Caesar. 27. So it's another language, another word, completely different. Uh, here in this case, uh, the part of speech tagger and lemmatizer that, that is behind the text linker was uh, trained on a very wide corpus, not only big, but wide, in the sense that it covers different diachronic periods of Latin. So hopefully it works pretty well. OK, of course, you don't reach 100%. And if you give uh, a documentary text uh, written by an ignorant uh, uh, scribe uh, in Tuscany in the 8th century, and it, it's full of mistakes, it's much difficult. 
Okay, thank you very much for, for this, this great talk. We are trying to build something similar from Hungarian, for Hungarian. So my question is, can you go back to the URI of Admiral? Yes, sure. So good to know that if somebody is working on this for another language and for Hungarian in particular. So that was, uh, here it is. I think that this, this yes. is this one. Yes, just please imagine that the URI uh, would be Lila yes, EU uh, slash admiral. Well, uh, uh, well, of course. What 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 is the pros and cons? Because we are thinking about this, and it seems to be convenient. Well, okay. it seems to be, but on my experience, it's not, because uh, we started just from that. So assign the name of the lemma to the URI. There were two problems. First, there are there are different lemmas with the same name, homography. You have two admirer. What do you do? Okay, you can say admirer one, admirer two. Second, several times you have different written representations for the same lemma, admirer and admirer. Okay, if you have to choose one. Third, on my experience, data are subject to change. My life, I spend my life correcting, fixing the errors in the lemma bank. I will die doing this. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, so this number will never change. It is for that lemma. So to me, it's better to use URIs that are not uh, parlanti, they are not speaking. Just use a number, because it's 90. That's it. Thank you. We have to stop here. Thanks very much again, so, Marco. Thank you very much to you. <clears throat> and... Uh, <clears throat> I will close with one piece of uh, advertisement, and Milos will have an announcement. Uh, <clears throat> so this work that you saw today will probably in some form continue in Alexis Association. So you are asked to join if you are interested.